am Julie DeMont Barker. I'm a buyer's advocate for Buyer's Home Base, and I'm going to be talking on the online prosperity show, and, and I'll be talking about how to buy a home and how to save some money, how to save some time, and how to save some heartache in doing that. Give you some tips and um, hope you learn something. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the buyer's advocate, Julie. Julie, how are you doing today? I'm really good. How are you? Fantastic. Now, obviously, if you're watching this show right now, you would understand that we are always bringing in experts so that they can help you be, do, and have a happier existence. And in this process, or in this particular episode, we're going to be looking at how you can trust someone to look after your most important financial decision, which is purchasing a property or your first home. Now, a lot of people don't quite know that uh, a buyer's advocate is going to be that one person who would make life easier for you and, um, you know, clarify all the things that um, uh, might be confusing in the housing market and everything else like that. So it's also confusing for me. And that's the reason why I've brought in Julie here, um, who's got oodles amounts of experience in real estate um, so that she can give us a glimpse of what it is and, you know, how to actually hire the best, um, you know, uh, buyer's agent in the business. Now, Julie, Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to become, um, you know, the most preferred to buyer's agent in Melbourne. Uh, my story, well, first of all, you'll notice I have an accent. Um, so I'm not originally from Melbourne. Um, and I knew nothing about real estate when I moved here. Um, I remember backing out of a driveway in Nidri and there was a crowd of people on a Saturday morning, and I um, I actually thought somebody had been shot, <laughs> being American. Um, I didn't know what was going on, but it was an auction. And um, that was fascinating to me, because in America, for the most part, a few, few, few uh, on the rare occasion, they'll auction a property. But that is usually to clear it out and get rid of it. So it was just a really, like an odd concept for me. Um, I started my real estate career in Melbourne uh, about 15 years ago and I was a real estate agent um, very successful for about 10 almost 11 years of that and I uh, you know I, I learned how it works I guess behind the scenes um, and I took a break from that and I had some friends uh, that they didn't know I was on a break and they said, you know, they called me up and they said, can you help my son Nick and Fiona? They're moving down from Darwin. Um, they're first home buyers and they don't know what they're doing. And so I didn't really, you know, have anything else to do because I wasn't working and I was really just sorting out what I wanted to do next. And um, so I, I said, I'd love to help them. And I guess the long and short story of that is um, that I actually, help them find a property within two weeks. I negotiated it so they saved $12,000 from the asking price. I had a blast doing it. And when I was driving home and I got the phone call that the, the agent had called them and they got the property and Nick was buzzed and Fiona's in the background in tears and, and it kind of all washed over me that that's what I really love to do. And that's helping people you know, achieve their goal. And I thought, well, I was a buyer's advocate, I guess. That's pretty much what I just did. And even though, you know, for the 10 years prior, occasionally, a lot more, there's a lot more buyer's advocates in the market now. It was a very, it's a growing side of the industry, I guess. Um, but back when I was an agent, I'd get the occasional phone call and somebody would say, you know, Julie, can you help me buy a home? And my, my client's looking for this. And, but I really didn't know what they did. And I didn't know what they charged. So when I had this kind of epiphany that was like, oh, that was fun, and I, I was a buyer's advocate, I, I, went to, I went back home and I started researching. And um, this is now just about almost exactly five years ago. And five years ago, 
my research in Melbourne, and actually Australia-wide, the average buyer's advocate was charging 2% of the purchase price of the home. And uh, I just thought that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's, a, that's a, an ex exorbitant amount for one. But two, it was that, you know, it's like if I'm trying to help you buy a home, it's my job to help you save. If I'm charging you a percentage, that means if you spend more, I make more. And that's, it's a direct conflict of interest. And I was, I could not believe that it was happening, that nobody seemed to be pointing to that fact. And plus, Nick and Fiona, my first home buyers, I had just helped. If they would have paid me on that fee, they would have paid me $11,000. And because they, you know, they spent five fifty, and I was like, first home buyers would have no help out there in the market at all, based on those charges on two percent. So I thought I can do better than that. I'm going to do it, and so that was how the company started. So Buyers Home Base started out for first home buyers, and within the first few weeks, I had nine clients, and it was word of mouth. It was friends telling friends. It was parents telling kids. It was just word of mouth. I didn't even have a, a, a website. I didn't have a Facebook page. And it was all word of mouth. And I thought, I've hit a raw nerve here. The, the market needs this. First home buyers need this. I had sat as a real estate agent on the other side of the table negotiating for my vendor. And as clever as some first home buyers might think they are, usually they're not very good negotiators. And I took a lot of money off of them for my vendors. So that was what I was paid to do then. But, I, but seeing that and seeing the gaping hole that nobody's helping them, I just, I thought somebody has to do this. So that was how Buyer's Home Base was born. And very, very quickly, within the first 10 months, I knew I needed help because you know, I, 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 was, I was overwhelmed with the work, which is great, but you know, you can only keep, you can only take on so many clients before you're no longer doing a, a good job. So, um, we've grown now. We have a team of seven advocates and myself. Um, my, my husband actually left his very well-paid corporate job to do all of the admin and back end. Um, and the, the first home buyers, as they bought, started telling moms and dads, aunts and uncles, and all of a sudden we had investors and developers. And, and the one thing I had set the company up was a low flat fee. I wanted to have the lowest flat fee for first home buyers in the nation. <coughs> Pardon me. And we've done that and we've continued to do that. So first home buyers for our service, if they buy under 700,000, it's a 3,000 dollar flat fee it's not a percentage and plus GST so everything's plus GST and if they buy above 700,000 it's a 5,000 flat fee and for everybody else I, I've, I've bid at auction for 4.2 million dollar properties for a 6,000 flat fee now you do the numbers if if that guy would have in, engaged a 2% of the purchase price of the home advocate on a $4.2 million property. So some call me really silly, <laughs> but I'm all about, um, you know, that I, I suppose the heart and soul of the company has come out of that, that genuine care for first home buyers. Maybe it's because my kids are in their thirties and I know um, the struggle out there. I know how hard it is. I know that when you go out there um, as a buyer, as opposed to a business like if you go out there and if I go out in my baseball cap and trappy decks with my accent, they think I know nothing about the property market. They think I'm fresh off the boat or the plane and, <laughs> and how I get treated is right. quite different than when I go in and I say, you know, you know, hello, I'm Julie DeBont Barker. Here's my business card. I'm a buyer's advocate. They, it's totally different how I get treated. And so I know how the buyers get treated because I, I fly under the radar occasionally um, <laughs> and do my undercover work. <laughs> Great stuff. So um, it's, 
you know, I, I, I'm sure there'd be first home buyers that are going, whoa, $3,000 or whoa, $5,000. But um, the, the service that we provide, um, our promise is to save you time, save you heartache, and save you money. Now, we'd love it to always be all three. Um, I, it would be a lie if I said we can save you money every time because sometimes just getting the property saves you money from having to look and look and look when the market was going up. Now that the market's flattened out, the saving time and saving heartache really come into play because <clears throat> the pricing right now in Melbourne is all over the shop. And even though we're in it every single day and we've got our finger on the pulse all over Melbourne, we have monthly sales meetings with the team and we are trying to determine, you know, where has it come down 2% and where has it come down 20%? Nobody's even talking about. So, you know, knowing what's going on in the market, whether you're a first home buyer or, you know, you know, a mom and dad investor or a savvy investor, it's really difficult out there right now. So the saving time and heartache is still our job. And the saving money, man, if we can do it, we do. Um, we are very good at taking properties off the market prior to auction. A um, couple of tips. Don't ever, ever give a verbal offer. And don't ever email an offer in. Wow. Ever. Okay. It's... it's, it's um, it's negotiation um, muck up 101 <laughs> because that it's not an offer. It's actually not an offer. It's not legally binding and it needs to be on a contract of sale and you need somebody to do that for you. And that's one of the things we can do. We write out a contract of sale, we take it to the agent and, and they have to treat that with a lot different um, level of respect than a verbal offer or an emailed offer. Absolutely. Well, thank you. We don't you. have to negotiate. Great stuff. Thank you so much for that uh, elaborate answer right there. You're welcome. There's quite a lot of, um, you know, little bits of nuggets that you dropped along the way. So I'm probably just going to retract a little bit and, um, you know, just have a feel sure. of, um, um, you know, one of the things that might be the biggest pain point um, of, you know, somebody who's going to be on the market right now. It's the knowledge of knowing um, what to do, who to trust. And also the market, as you say, is full of commission-based advocates, how to know um, which one to work with. And um, like you say, it is a direct, um, you know, conflict for the buyer. So as you have seen all this time in the five years that you've been in business and, and all the time that you've stayed around uh, in Australia for somebody who is probably just watching this show here. What is the one thing they really have to be skeptical about uh, when somebody starts, um, you know, asking them about uh, becoming their bias advocate? Uh, number one would be is that they're charging a percentage. That's really number one. Um, it has to be, it can only be a direct conflict of interest for the client because what I said earlier, it, it, it that means if, you know, how can you trust somebody that if you're going to spend more, they make more that are they going to try and negotiate the property $10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars less? Well, how could they, they're going to make less money. I have bid at a boardroom auction in Koran against another buyer's advocate. And the morning of this, you know, we were going to have the boardroom auction. I was actually driving in already and the agent rings me. And he said, um, Julie, I just, I just wanted to give you the heads up. He says, another buyer's advocate is going to be there. And I said, well, that's okay. You know, we have our budget. I know where it should be. I'm not going to let my client spend any more than it's worth. That's all right. And he says, yeah, I just, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that this buyer's advocate, their claim to fame is that they never lose at an auction. And I'm like, what do, you, what do you mean? <laughs> That's not a claim to fame. <laughs> who would be sucked into that? Like, who gets sucked into that? Like, yeah, you, you just put the really? highest B then. <laughs> and he did. He spent, and I'm pretty, I'm like, I get pretty passionate, so it's 
sorry guys, but he spent $150,000 over anything that should have been spent on his house. Whoa. Like, like now you'd think, gee, his clients must not have been very smart. I was there before him. His clients were there before him. We're in a boardroom auction. I'm, I'm sitting across the table. I can hear everything the same. Right. They were buying this property out of their self-managed super fund. Right. It was their first property out of their self-managed super fund. They, they have to have the bank valuation. You know, on Monday, if they're successful, that goes off to the bank or their mortgage broker, and they order a bank valuation, especially now since the Royal Commission. And if that bank valuation doesn't stack up to the value that they pay, they have to pay the difference. So that was all going to come out of the retirement. He got them the property, though. Yay. Um, like, seriously. Yeah. So there are sharks in the waters in the arena I work in. And it, you know, it's, it's, um, buyer's advocate, you would think, oh, that's somebody, they're on my side. So the first answering your question, if, if it's somebody that start charging you a percentage, I would just spin on my heels and walk the other way because there is no way I can see how that can work for the client. No way. Great stuff. That guy made $26,000 that morning. Wow, that just, by, just by showing up, of which he was late to the meeting, like you said. he never loses. <laughs> Great his stuff. Clients did. His clients did. Absolutely. No, so, no, no, if Julie. My, if my clients would have bought that property, that would have cost them $5,000. Wow. Now, that's, that's a really huge saving, and I can imagine what else they could do since you say it was in the self-managed super fund. Now, the people that are normally watching this uh, video um, you know, are probably experts in their own realm, and they're really looking to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And they do understand that um, you know, when you go in after you've got the profit and you want to invest uh, the next best thing is to, you know, um, maybe invest in property or some sort of investments. And now you've mentioned uh, maybe a self-managed super fund. They might have one of those things. But this is one thing that now happens. When you are purchasing a property, like you have mentioned, um, there's going to be need to connect to experts, uh, you know, like a mortgage broker, like a financial planner, like an accountant, a solicitor, conveyancers, pest controllers, tradespeople, you name it. All these people are going to be needing a piece of their attention, a piece of their time, and of which I don't think um, if you're running a business and you're trying to invest at the same time, you've got time for all this back and forth. Now, as a buyer's advocate, how do you then solidify or you know, uh, help them out with these um, connections that they need in order to, to make a, a worthwhile investment? Yeah. Um... Well, first of all, we have all those connections because well, between myself and my team, we added it up. We've all combined been in the industry over 80 years. So you've kind of got 80 years worth of different people's access to all of those professionals. Um, you know, one person on, on um, the team, like she grew up in a building family, like, and she, you know, she has access to lots of builders and tradies and carpenters and all those kind of people. Um, we all have, we probably all have our individual favorites, but one thing that when I set the company up, I'm, I was very firm about, and it's a deal breaker with any of my advocates and they know it, is that we do not give and we do not take or share any commissions, kickbacks, any, any kind of money exchanging. Um, we don't do that giving or taking because that keeps it really clean and really transparent. And that means if I'm going to re recommend somebody to you, we never recommend one, we recommend two. So you choose, but what you can know is either way, either one you choose, they're going to do a good job because they've either, we've either worked with them in business for, you know, two, two to 20 years on some of our, you know, our levels of experience in the industry and some of them are our own personal people that we use. You know, I'll recommend my solicitor and my financial advisor. You don't have to use them. Um, 
and that's okay because I'm not waiting on you know two hundred dollars for you to use them and get a kickback on it. So anybody we recommend, I'm willing to hang the buyer's home base hat on the rack by theirs, knowing that they operate from the same level of, I guess, the same ethos and the same integrity that that we're building in this company. Absolutely, I like the fact that you don't accept any uh, sort of kickbacks. So with that sort of token uh, of help um would you help people to inspect prior and then tell them to buy or not to buy uh based on your, your experience and, and sort of report on your findings uh on how the property looks and and actually give somebody the best advice because a lot of people end up buying lemons or you know properties that don't quite fit in the jigsaw puzzle of their portfolio what, what what's your play in that as having a, a buyer's advocate um um, well, there's, I guess I'll kind of rewind a little bit and, and go back to the two different types of buyers. There's really, there's home buyers and there's investors. And so when we, we have a one hour free consultation. Um, so when we either sit down and meet with somebody or if they're interstate or overseas, then we Skype or FaceTime, however, whatever works. But we, we have a one hour free consultation and kind of half of that consultation is talking about who we are as a business, like I've been doing. And half of the consultation, if not more, is finding out if it's their home, they're gonna be buying a home to live in, finding about their dream home, finding about the location that they want, the type of home they want, and why they want those things. Because one of the key questions we always ask, and this is, it's a killer question. And if, if, if you have any home buyers out there, you're gonna hate this. <laughs> But it really is, I've got the perfect house you just described in this hand, and I've got the perfect location that you just described in this hand. Choose. And, because oftentimes you don't get both. Great. Oftentimes you don't get both. And, and if you have a couple, if it's a, you know, a, a couple of people, and they're not on the same page on the answer to that question, it's going to take them a long time to find a house. Wow. So there's a bit of psychology in what we do also. <laughs> Maybe a bit of counseling. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but it's, it's really, for a home buyer, that's a critical question to answer. And if we get it nailed down to, say they say, really, Julie, you know, it ends up being it's the location. We'll always try in the main location to find the perfect house and, and cross our fingers. Or if it's the perfect house, we'll just look for the house in a few locations. But we'll, we'll, it's really, we'll start with what their ideal is and then, you know, expand it either the location or, you know, we might say, you know, it doesn't look like you're going to get the, the four bedrooms. You're going to have to go to three or you know, and give them compromises, but we're walking them through it every step of the way. Um, and then, yes, we, we inspect them um, if they're interstate or overseas. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, I'll just take my phone and FaceTime somebody through like they're standing beside me and say, you know, this looks great. There is a crack there I'm a little concerned about. I think you need a building inspection or you know, the brickwork down there looks a little dodgy. It might be rising damp. I think you need a building inspection. But, you know, I've walked through thousands of homes. So I'm not a builder. I'm not a building inspector. But I can kind of tell, you get a sense if something's solid or not. I, in my whole team, we err on the area, the, the side of being conservative. So if we think there, there might be a problem, then we recommend a building and pest inspection. Right. If we're absolutely certain, and some things are, some things are absolutely rock solid, inside out, dry, you know, might be, might be a home that's still under builder's warranty. So it's like, do you spend the $700 for a building and pest inspection when it's under builder's warranty? You kind of right. don't need to. Absolutely. Um, so we give them advice on that all the way, whether it be a home buyer or an investor. Um, with the investor, um, a lot of times if it's a first time investor, it's training them to take off their buyer's hat and put on the investor's hat. 
I've just had a lovely couple I've been working with that um, they were first home help first home investors. So every home they'd walk through, she'd be like, "Oh, I don't like the color of the walls," <laughs> and I'm like, "That's okay. Your tenant might not care." <laughs> Wow. You know, and, and just a training and a training and, and, you know, you know, there wasn't enough light in one of the bedrooms, you know, things like that. So it's the training, the shifting from it looking like the home to live in to numbers. It's the numbers stack up, you buy it. The numbers don't stack up, you don't buy it. And, and, and then it all, all, you know, with an investment, um, we always, you know, it's like, it's, kind of 101 but you know you want to start as close to stations and schools and shops and and Absolutely. you know universities and 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 all of that and as close as your budget will allow into the CBD and then if it if it is a long-term investment like you want you know high capital growth that's the, the other question. Sorry, I'm jumping around. I'm trying to remember the questionnaire, but the, the, the probably one of the key questions that investors need to answer is what do you, I mean, what do you want to achieve? What's your goal? Do you want high capital growth or do you want high rental return? And it's kind of that choose again, because oftentimes you don't get both. So if they say, well, you know, we really want high capital growth and how long are you going to hang on to it? minimum five years if it's high capital growth right now with the market turn i'd say 10 years plan on hanging on to it for 10 years if you want good return on it because it's flattening out and going down it's it's just what's happening so you know in that that answer to that question determines where we start looking you know you're not going to get um high quick um, high capital growth, if you go way, way, way out, it's going to be slower. So you want to get as much land under you, all those kind of things. So, we'll, you know, villa units are really a great compromise um, with that. But, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's really, we, we walk them through all of that. We inspect, we advise, and we negotiate. Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, like you said, there's that whole um, choice. And um, I think it was Oprah Winfrey that mentioned that we can get all that we want, but not all at the same time. I mean, obviously, you have definitely given us uh, enough to get started in searching for, um, you know, a buyer's advocate. Now, if somebody has been watching this show right now and, you know, is now uh, pregnant with information, so to say, and they've got questions as to how do we get started or what else do they need uh, to move the needle in, um, in order for them to become, um, you know, one of your clients or a first home buyer. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you then? Um, the best way they can either um, go, go onto the website is the best way. Um, and that's buyershomebase.com.au, all one word, buyers with an S homebase.com.au. They can also ring the 1300 number, which is 1300-882-842. Um, and that, that goes, yeah, that, that will probably end up coming through to me at some point, but um, it's all, it always starts with after they've made contact, then it's always a one hour free consultation. Um, so if they're in, in Melbourne, we come to you, how we save the money, we, we're, it's in the name home base. We're all home based. So we don't have the big overheads. So we don't have to put those onto you. So we come to you. We'll come to you at a time that works. Um, many of our appointments are after people have put the kids to bed. Um, we work on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, if you don't want us to come to your house, we can meet at a cafe during your lunch hour. You know, we, we try and fit it in with you. If, if there's two of you, it is critical for us to meet with both of you um, because, because of that question. <laughs> Absolutely. Great stuff. You know, if, it's a, if it's a couple yeah. buying a home, yeah. they may not answer the question. Way. Absolutely. We need to know that. So basically, considering there's going to be friction between the couples, does the you know, buyer's advocacy also have extras for divorce counseling or things, things of that nature? <laughs> No, I, I actually work very hard that they both end up 
So there isn't that. <laughs> you know? Great stuff. All right. So you might be looking for, you know, somebody to take you through all of these various st stages. Maybe it's the purchasing of your investment property, you're searching, you want to do all the due, um, due diligence, and you also want to have somebody hold your hand while you're negotiating or bidding and just, you know, walk you through um, past the, uh, you know, the, the mistakes that you might do or formulating offers, like you say, don't email in an offer or don't uh, call in an offer or something like that. Or maybe the bidding strategies, people like uh, Julie at uh, Buyers Home Base are more than happy to, um, you know, help you out all of this at a low flat fee. Now I'm going to be putting all the information uh, about your website and your 1300 number so that people can actually um, get a hold of you and walk, um, you know, and, 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 and you help them um, get into their first property or their first investment. Now, so like I said, at the end of the day, you know, people might just be still not really convinced um, about what to do and um, you know whether to call you or not. What is your normal go-to advice that you tell people that are just sitting right at the fence and they I'm don't I'm so glad you asked me that. <laughs> I'm so glad because I was going to say before you, before we wrapped up, I, I was going to say, yeah, don't believe a word I've just said. Don't believe a word of what I've said. Go to Buyer's Home Base Facebook page and read the reviews. Right. That's it. Right. I, I could never make up those reviews. I think there's, last time I looked, I think there was 115 five-star reviews and they're really gushy and I'm really proud of them because I, it's like, that's my accolade. I don't need, like knowing that we have achieved that for all those people, it really, I get quite, it's touching. And so don't believe me, go to the Facebook page, Buyers Home Base, Facebook page, read the reviews. And then if you feel okay, then give me a call. <laughs> Absolutely. I like the confidence in that uh, in as much as if you've got social proof and people are actually, uh, you know, singing your praises and accolades, then that means if you've done it for them and you've gotten them results, then obviously you do it for somebody else. I really respect your time there, Julie, and all the expertise that you've dropped in this show today. Definitely whoever has been watching now has an idea of what you do and how you can best help them for. And the fact that you say you come to wherever anyone is, so there's no excuse for you to say, I don't have time to inquire with a buyer's advocate, but whether it's your lunch break um, or in a cafe, like she has said, or after um, service home. And like she also has mentioned that the reason why they are cheap is because they are operating from a home base. Now, if you have enjoyed this show, I will be putting in all the details on how to uh, get a hold of Julie so that you too can um, basically start um, your journey towards purchasing your investment property with peace of mind. Now, Julie, I can't thank you enough for the time that you spend with us on the show today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you. Great stuff.